Hey guys, this is Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today we're going to talk about Release Me by Jay Kenner. And this book wasn't at all enjoyable to me. I, w I had such high expectations because on Goodreads they were saying, it's like Bear to You, it's like Fifty Shades, and I'm just like, okay, two of my favorite series, and the combined? This can only be good. But this is like a poorly written Bear to You fan fiction is what I got from it. I think one interesting point that they made was what passion actually was. And I liked that on the cover it says only his passion could set her free. And it makes sense to the story so I liked that that little tag made sense to it. And then they gave the literal definition of passion. It was like some Greek or Latin definition of it and it was basically saying like submit and give control and stuff so that was a really interesting thing. I feel bad about her. She has this awful relationship with her mother. She's from Texas and She's not blonde, big hair, don't even go there, my hair's curly today, I ignore, don't go there. And she was in pageants and stuff, and then he was judging one of the pageants, like, however many years ago, and then she went to LA and runs into him, and part of her job was to give this presentation, so she was supposed to, like, kind of reel him in, in a way, and she remembers him, and he's mean to her, and she's like, I don't know if he remembers me or not, and then he's like being super controlly for no reason and then her friend Ollie is like oh he's dangerous stay away and so I'm like okay like this is potentially a good book and then we find out kind of what it is she spells it out I loathe it when things are spelled out for me I wasn't given any hints it was obvious but in a I didn't give a damn kind of obvious way I don't know how to describe it so much, but I was disappointed. I had such high expectations, and I'm just like, can this just be over? Really? Can it just be over? This is kind of going to be more of a rant than it is a review today. I mean, there were a couple good points, but for the majority of the book, I was just like, ah, oh, make it stop. This is like, I'm trying to copy Bear to you, and I'm going to throw a little bit of Christian in there, but then not really. Like, they don't do it well. I'm fine if you want to copy a story, but try and make it better than the first one. This just fell short. I'm going to start talking spoilers now, guys, because I just want to, you know, nitpick the hell out of this book. I really do. I promise I won't the whole time, but yeah. So I'm going to talk spoilers, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. So when it first starts off and she's at the party, and then how she sees herself with glass and, like, cutting her hand and stuff, and I was just like, that's weirdly interesting. And I thought, okay, well, I know this is going to be some sort of sadism, masochism kind of relationship that they have. I can see it happening. But I liked that it was slowly hinting at it. And it was interesting to me because it brought her past in and not a slam you over the head with it way at first. I do give props where it's deserved though because in describing what Damien looks like with his eyes, he had one amber color eye and then the other one was permanently dilated from a tennis accident. And I'm like, that's creepy. And he reminded me of a shark. Maybe it was his last name and I just mispronounced it once in my head, Stark Shark. But his eyes, I give credit where it's due because that was creepy and I haven't seen that before and I thought that was really cool. If he says, oh baby, one more time, I swear to God, I was, make it stop. Stop, stop, stop. When Damien was at the party looking at the painting with Nikki, I, I, I was like, people don't, you're in a crowded room. Always, always with the propositions. You, you, this is the best time to suggest that. Oh, you're in a crowded room at a party. You'll... Okay. And I understand that you need to get to the point of it. And so I overlooked how fast it started. I was willing to do that, but never got anywhere past that. It was so cruise control and nothing, nothing unexpected happened. There were no twists. It was just like, this is where the story begins. He finds out about her cutting herself and then just what I there was nothing to go for at that point okay so this Sarah's brother Eric thing okay if he killed her like I was I wasn't threatened at all oh okay a million dollars for a nude portrait I mean I understand that art like that it goes for some money it's crazy but are you serious that's this whole deal like I'm glad that it wasn't I have a proposition for you let's set a contract and have this relationship and <laughs> no I'm glad it wasn't that but I was disappointed with it the way it was. I mean, once the story got going, I was more okay with it, but it was just awkward. I kind of wish maybe this would have been good if maybe he were the artist. 
because that third person, I understand it happened, has to happen that way, but it's awkward. I was right along with Nikki thinking that he was going to freak out over the scars because he saw her in bathing suits before in the pageant. And I was just like, oh, but he accepted her and that was really sweet. And the one part that I really cared was when she gave her whole story about how her mom treated her and her sister's suicide and being locked in the dark rooms and stuff and how it was her way of coping with it. And I really felt for her at that point. And then with Kurt and his whole thing, how at first he was like, oh, I accept you. And then they were drunk one night and he said, it's a damn good thing you have a pretty face because like you're so hideous kind of thing. And I'm just, oh my God, that was awful. Like sunk down, ouch. That woman's mother is one fucked up pageant mom. Oh, I don't like this Ollie character. One, what is his point for being there? There is none. Him with Jamie, there's no point to that. I feel like there's so many loose ends. Like what, all it made me do was not like him. Someone that's not trustworthy like that, I'm thinking that he's a snake in the grass. But then we were trying to be led to think that he's as good. I don't understand the point of it. I don't, why is he here? So this Oliver guy is like a, I tried to become a Carrie from Bear to You, but I didn't go there. I don't like him. When Ollie told Nikki about him looking and seeing that Stark has tabs on her, I'm like, okay, what's the big deal? Like, all right, same thing as Googling him. Maybe a little more in depth, but I wasn't really bothered by that. Like it was a little, uh, but I, ex I expected that. But then he's watched her since her pageants and followed her throughout her academica. Oh yeah, that was a little bit creepy. I'll give you that. I was a little confused that after the whole thing when he had sex with her, but that was a quick scene, by the way, so I didn't really get the full effect of how he forced himself, which he didn't. I was just confused by that whole thing. I'm like, that didn't that didn't happen though, at all. And then he's like punching the punching bag until the hands are bleeding. What? What? I mean, it was such a big dose of disappointment. I was just like, okay, so you took a little piece of Gideon with the whole I had an abused past thing, but not far enough and not in detail enough for me to actually give a damn. And then I took a little bit of Christian Grey, and just, it was, I'm gonna borrow this aspect and borrow that aspect, but I'm not actually making a character, and I did not know either of these characters. Her reactions. To like shit that she didn't put together, that we were like, well that was obvious, and it wasn't surprising to us at all, because it was practically spelled out so early. And then she spells it out, and then she's like in tears about it. That one, it's not a big deal. Two, you have known, because we've known. Why are you, she's giving Texas a bad name, blonde chicks from Texas she's get, you've given us all a bad name good job thanks okay but I did I really did like how her the scene where after her mother left and she was on the floor with the knife and stuff I was like and I, I did care at that part and then with the scissors and then the cutting of the hair and then she woke up and Damien was there and I like that it was a little trippy there because we didn't understand where you got from point A to point B because she didn't understand that either so good job good job there then the thing with Carl I'm like, so that's what the second book is? Okay, I don't think I'm gonna read it. I just was disappointed. And I mean, if the second one gets seriously good ratings, I'll pick it up and get through it. These are short books. I mean, it's a one day kind of thing, but I felt like I could have been reading another book that was worth my time. That, ouch, yeah, I meant it. Yeah, so not the best book, um, but yeah. So share your thoughts down there, what you thought was good and bad, what you may disagree with me with. I won't be mean. So I'll talk to you guys later next month, Bookworms Talk. See ya.